Hello scholars, welcome back. Mr. Hinkle here. We're talking about coastlines, the dynamic feature, the interface between the land and the sea. And in particular, in this lecture, we're looking at ocean waves, how they're generated at land, how they travel across the ocean, and then what happens when they meet the land. How they generate land? No, how they're generated in the ocean, and then how they meet the land at the shoreline. So, the objectives for today, define the mechanisms of wave motion, and then analyze the formation and types of waves. Let's get into it. So, ocean waves are awesome. Giant waves occur. Why do they occur like this? Well, big waves and small waves alike are operating underneath the same processes of waves that are periodic motion carrying energy from one location to another and when this motion when this wave energy interacts with the coastline large breakers can form as we see here waves are important they shape earth's coastline they influence marine ecosystems and they impact human activities uh, recreation economy where we live all that and more so there's four main types of waves wind generated, seismic, tsunamis, and tidal waves. Now, let's get into this for just a brief moment. The type of waves that I'll be discussing for the rest of this lecture are wind generated. They're the most common type of wave that produces waves that travel all across the ocean. Seismic waves happen from underwater earthquakes, landslides. Certain seismic waves turn into tsunamis, a Japanese word that means harbor wave, for very large oceanic waves. They're a type of seismic wave, but one that have very long wavelengths and can travel extreme distances across ocean basins, resulting in extreme damage and loss of life. These are dangerous waves. Not to be confused with tidal waves, which are waves that are generated from tidal forces, i.e. the gravitational attraction of the sun, the moon, and the earth in conjunction with one another. So, wind-generated waves, this is what we're looking at. Wind happens because of the unequal distribution of heating across Earth's surface, and as Earth rotates, it creates three convection cells, um, the Hadley, the Farrell, and the polar cells, and those create preferred orientations of wind direction. I know I'm giving you more information than you probably want to know, but the atmosphere is really cool. And it all starts in the atmosphere. The wind gen turns into a storm, and it starts to blow over a distance. So the three factors that are causing, creating wind-generated waves, let's see, here's wind, is going to be the wind speed, how fast is that wind going, it's going to be the wind duration, which is how long, and then also The amount of area that the wind is blowing over, this is called the fetch. So we've got speed, duration, and fetch. The, fr the three factors that are going to contribute to how much energy is transferred from the atmosphere into the ocean and then that energy that's transferred is now transported long distances via ocean waves. So here maybe you know, slightly better than what I had on the board, not much, just a little bit. We've got the wind direction, we've got the wind or er, the wind speed, the wind duration, and then the fetch is going to be the size over which that storm is blowing. Now, lots of storms happening all over, out in the ocean, things are all good. These waves can interact with one another. 
Once these waves have generated and they leave the fetch, then what happens is we have capillary waves developing into chop waves that then transport long distances as swells. So a little bit of wind with small wavelengths, less than 1.7 centimeters, turns into choppy waves. And then you can see the storm clouds up here. The wind is blowing. Energy is transferring. Chop is happening. And then these waves smooth out and they travel long distances. This wave is breaking, so it must be near a shoreline. But we are going to talk about that. So this is the order of wind-generated waves. First, you have capillary, a little bit of wind. Moving to chop, a little bit more wind. And then swells travel long distances until they finally meet the ocean. Great. So let's talk about various components of the wave. And I could draw it up here, but I'll just use our figure up. So if there was no waves, this would be the still water level or the calm sea level, a horizontal surface that represents equilibrium. Now, when there are waves, there's an undulation. Another, this is wind-generated waves. The wind is also causing gravity to um, move these waves along. But we have components. The top of the wave is the crest. The bottom of the wave is the trough. The distance from one crest to another crest or one trough to another trough, this is the wave length. And then we have the height from Crest to trough being our wave height. Important characteristics of waves to understand how waves transfer across the ocean. Now, <coughs> waves are moving, so it's important that we bring the time aspect in. <coughs> we have the amplitude is going to be from the still water line to the crest of the wave. Here we see the wavelength again. And then also what we can bring in is the frequency and the period. The period is going to be the time it takes for two successive uh, crests or one wavelength to pass by a certain point. So we can see here. <coughs> Let's have this. OK, wait, I'm going to wait for it. Crest one, two, three, four. Five, six. OK, so the period would have been six seconds. Now, the frequency is the number of waves passing a point in a given amount of time. <clears throat> Usually, it's the inverse of the period. In this case, it would be 1 over 6. How fast the wave is moving is going to be the celerity, the wavelength, times the frequency. What's moving? Is all the water from the middle of the ocean being carried all the way to the coastline? No. Actually, the way the water moves is in what's called circular orbital motion. So here's a particle. You can see as the wave passes through, it moves. Let's go again. Down the back, up the front, down the back, up the front, down the back, in this circle. Wave energy actually extends down into the water column, too. And the deepest that the wave energy goes is known as the wave base, the depth where orbital movement of water particles stops. And the wave base equals the wavelength divided by 2. So half the wavelength is how deep that wave base goes. This is important for the interaction of waves that are traveling across the deep ocean when they get close to the uh, coastline, creating deep water waves, transitionary waves, and shallow waves. So all of this, wavelength, wave height, wave base, is to understand what generates breaking waves at the coastline. So I think in order to do this, I need to draw another photo. Waves, it's still up there. Let's keep talking. So we've got a deep water wave. 
with a wavelength, and then a wave base, which equals L over 2. Deep water, because it's in deep water where it doesn't matter what the depth of the water is, but the wave can't feel the bottom. And then as we get closer to the coastline, this wave starts to essentially feel the bottom. It interacts with the bottom of the ocean, the seafloor. And this now creates a transitionary wave where the wave begins to interact with the seabed. Speed decreases, height increases, steepness increases. And then when the wave gets close enough where the depth is greater than L over 20, we have a significant influence. So basically it goes like this. The waves get a bigger wave height. and the wavelength decreases, the waves become steep to where now they start to break. So why do waves break? Why do surfers have these awesome waves that they can surf? Well, it has to do with the mechanics of wave motion. Deep water waves do not feel the ocean floor. As they transport long distances, they start to interact, and then at some point, their wavelength decreases, their wave height increases, they become oversteepened, and they break right on top of themselves. So this happens, and we get different types of waves occurring based on the slope of the seafloor, which gives us different shapes. Now, I like this image because it shows the different shapes. What I don't like about this is it doesn't show the different slopes because Spilling breakers on gently sloping. Plunging breakers are a little bit steeper. Collapsing are a little bit steeper. And then surging are the steepest. Depending on the shape of the coastline, the gradient or the steepness of the seafloor at that coast will create different types of waves and or different types of breakers. And the best breakers for surfers are going to be plunging. They have a curling wave crest, and the wave energy is expended over the shortest distance. So waves breaking is a fundamental process that shapes coastlines and influences sediment transport. But it's important to note that no matter where waves occur, somehow they always look like they're parallel to the coastline. It doesn't matter what orientation of the coastline is. When you're out staring at those waves, they look like they are seemingly coming in parallel to you. This happens because of the process of wave refraction. There's the direction of the incoming swell, but this that we see is two-dimensional but our real world is in three dimensions. So the closer to the shore it gets, the slower the wave gets as the wavelength decreases, as the wave height increases. And essentially, that means the outside is moving faster and it bends around, bringing the wave near parallel to the shore. So because of the process of wave refraction, whenever you are looking at the ocean, you're not going to be staring at waves just passing you by they're going to be crashing or breaking or surging head on right at you. So we could talk about waves. We could keep going all day, all night. They are a fascinating phenomenon and it gets much deeper, but I think we've done a pretty good introduction um, showing how waves transfer energy through the ocean, how they uh, affect coastlines, how they are one of the fundamental processes that are creating shoreline features at this interface between our oceans and our continents. So thank you so much, and I'll see you again.